And joining us now as we talk about pulse crops and more, President and CEO of Columbia Grain International, Jeff Van Pevenage. Jeff, great to catch up with you again, sir. How are you? I'm good, Jesse. Good morning. Thanks for having me on today. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today, Jeff, and uh, some exciting news coming out from CGI here this uh, past month. Uh, new grain facilities acquired from Gavilon, eight of them, I believe, throughout Montana and North Dakota. So expanding the CGI footprint uh, across the Northern Plains region. Can you tell us a little bit about that acquisition? And uh, I'm sure you guys are excited about it. Yeah, we're very excited about it. You know, Marabini made a decision to divest in uh, a large majority of the Gavilon um, network. and But their focus is to have Columbia Grain be their main lead grain company within uh, the United States and domestically or and internationally. And so we consolidated a lot of the Gavilon asset, assets that were sitting in the northern tier um, footprint that we already have and have brought those in under our umbrella now. And we've got you know, a lot of great people that came along with that um, acquisition, a lot of really good assets. And I think it makes us a very strong network uh, supply chain in the northern tier of the United States. So some of the facilities we had been operating already under some lease agreements and other ones are new to new to our network. So it's been uh, it's been a really good experience for us so far. And we're looking forward to really making that machine work for us. So. Well, and you mentioned just kind of that network, and I would have to think, you know, tying in all these facilities throughout North Dakota, Montana, with with existing uh, facilities and the network that you have, it just it, it feels like it makes things very robust, Jeff. For CGI, it really, it really does, you know, and and CGI is handles um, a few more commodities than Gavilon was doing in those areas. We're going to be bringing in more dried beans, more peas, lentils, more malt barleys. Uh, so more options for growers to deliver into those assets, say in Carrington, New Rockford, Jamestown, um, and then over into uh, more Montana and Fairview, Montana. So I think it's going to be good for the grower as well as good for us. Well, Jeff, you mentioned, you know, and we talked a little bit about that network being more robust, but we also look at supply chains. And I know that's been a big topic in agriculture here in the, in the recent months and last year. Or so when you look at the supply chain challenges that I'm sure you, you guys have encountered, where do things stand right now? How are we looking when it comes to some of the supply chain issues, exports, et cetera? Where do we stand right now? You know, transportation is still a big problem. Um, you could say it's gotten better, but the, the overall movement of grain through the June, July, August period is usually a slow period. So I would hope that it would be better, but we still struggle in the uh, container mode. So a lot of these specialty crops, it's still difficult to get uh, enough containers to really keep your system going. Still really high prices in the container world, still high prices in the bulk vessel world as well, getting better. But there's a lot of th that last mile in the rail system is kind of a little bit broken still and needs to get worked on. I believe it's a lot about labor problems um, mm -hmm. throughout our system and, and lack thereof. We experience it as well at our own facilities, but we've got to get better on it to be more more reliable as suppliers and it's it's a big supply chain there's many people involved in it we've just got to get it fixed well and you brought up those rail issues and i was going to mention that as well you know it is tied to a lot of the labor discussions and a, a lot of talk uh, with folks in dc with uh, the surface transportation board etc when you look at rail with cgi's locations is it more of a, a short line railroad problem is it a major line railroad problem your class one railroads or is it a combination of everything that you're seeing you know it's really class one railroads that uh in our opinion, haven't lived up to their end of the bargain lately. I understand they're struggling, you know, to to have the labor that they need, and they're trying to run efficient business as well. But it's really been a difficult on the industry, not just Columbia Grain, but the overall industry is very unsatisfied with the service. Well, Jeff, let's talk a little bit, uh, shifting away from service, let's talk about this year's growing season, this year's crop that is uh, growing right now. When you look at different pulses, dry beans, peas, lentils, et cetera, what are you hearing from growers across the country? How are things looking here this year? You know, I, 
this year has been one of huge emotions in the growing season. You know, we we sat in Montana and we had you know droughts going in right to the to the first of June. Didn't think we'd get crops there. In the meantime, it's flooding in the Red River Valley and we can't get the crop in the ground there. And we've really turned the whole thing around. So the, the corn and beans that got in the ground look great. And, you know, just a little behind where they should be in a normal year, but everything looks really good right now. Uh, this winter wheat crop in Montana, for the most part, came off well. Spring wheat crop is looking good. We've got some early harvest going on on peas and lentils. Yields are at least average. Some of them are above average. And I, we think the best is yet to come in those pulse crops. So uh, we're really uh, optimistic about how this year is going to stack up for us and how it's going to stack up for the supply chain because there's there's plenty of product it looks like to me. Jeff, how about prices for growers on the pulse side? Are, are prices remaining strong with other commodities? I know we've seen volatility in, in some of the corn, bean, wheat commodities, but when you look at pulses, what's price action doing right now? How do things look there for growers? Uh, unfortunately, I would say price action in the pulse crop looks to me like it's going to soften to some degree. Uh, we had really high prices last year. We had tight supplies. Crops look better this year. I'm actually very concerned. A lot of these pulses are into that Indian subcontinent, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka. And there's a lot of foreign exchange issues there right now. Uh, Colombia, one of the larger buyers of lentils from the United States, the foreign exchange is just horrible down there. And those buyers are having a hard time stomaching the foreign exchange right now. So I think growers need to really be aware of what's going on in the world, particularly in foreign exchange. But I would have to say overall, the trend to me looks like most lentils, peas, chickpeas will probably tend to trend towards lower. You know, we've seen the wheat prices break back a lot here in the last uh, month. And that kind of will bring the expectation down on pulse crops as well. So I would say right now, as you're harvesting, think about getting some marketing going on because it doesn't look like a bullish market going forward. Well, Jeff, uh, before we run out of time, any other final thoughts you have for us uh, real quick here about uh, everything going on with CGI and what's going on in the pulse industry? You know, the thing I'd just like to remind growers is, is harvest is a time where there's a lot going on. Be safe out in the field. Um, make sure your equipment's running well. And don't be afraid to ask for, uh, for help on our part. If we can make your harvest go better, we're here to help you do that. So. Well, we appreciate the time, as always, with that president and CEO of Columbia Grain International, Jeff Van Pevenage. Thanks for joining us here today, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thank you, Jesse.